Hey everyone, how are you? Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, welcome back to art class. So this week we're gonna keep on working with color. Um, we're gonna look at a specific art movement. We've talked before about how different time periods in art history are called movements. Um, the video, which you should have watched up at the beginning of the page, is all about what we're what we're talking about. We're talking about something called cubism. Cubism, as you learned from the video, um, was a very different way of painting things than people had ever seen before. Now we've talked about this a little bit before in class, so we don't need to go into all the details. This will kind of be a, a review, a reminder. Um, the goal of the Cubist painters was to try and capture as many different um, elements, as many different parts of their subject as they could, all at the same time. So they didn't care so much about something looking like it does right when you look at it. They weren't trying to recreate like a, you know, a photograph. They weren't trying to recreate exactly 100% what it looked like. They were trying to capture like the experience of it. So that's why a lot of the uh, portraits, the cubist portraits of people look really strange because they, they've got different parts of their face and different spots that they wouldn't be. The colors are all, all different from, from normal skin tones and, and stuff like that. And kind of the way to think about it is if you were trying to paint a person and the whole time you were trying to paint them, you were walking around them in circles. So for a little while, you might be focused on this side of their head, then you might be focused here. You might start the painting inside and then move it outside. You might be near something that's reflecting a strange color on their face for half the painting, and then it might just be perfectly normal white light for the other half. So that's kind of why these things look um, segmented. They look like they're not all part of the same plan sometimes. So that was kind of the start of it. Um, after they got used to making artwork like that, they didn't have to like physically move around things. They could just paint that way out of their head, but it was the same goal. They were still trying to capture uh, many different parts of something at the same time. So the cubist artist that we are talking about is Picasso. And we've talked about him before. Um, he's probably most well known for this kind of deal. Um, this is a portrait that he made, and, and this is a really good example, like we were just talking about, of a cubist portrait of a person. Stuff might not all be the same size, they might not be in the right place, the colors are definitely crazy, and instead of trying to make the face look like one complete shape, not worried about it. It can all be individual shapes. Now even though he's known for stuff like this, he didn't just paint people, and the next thing you see is way more like what we're gonna do today. That's right, this is a rooster. This is a rooster painted by Pablo Picasso, which makes it a very famous rooster. Um, it's one of my favorite Picasso paintings because it's not like all the other ones. It's not like the ones that he made of people. Now you can still probably see some of the cubist ideas in this in this painting, right? The shapes aren't all normal, parts aren't necessarily where they're supposed to be, the colors aren't uh, exactly how they would look in real life. So that's, that's kind of our goal today. We're all gonna draw some roosters. Now these roosters are not supposed to look like real life actual chickens when we're done with them. We want them to be way more like those Picasso roosters. All right. Hopefully this will make more sense when we're drawing if it doesn't make sense already. So let's get started doing that. All right, everybody. So for today's project, you're gonna need some paper, a pencil, some crayons, maybe a marker if you have one, but it's not super important. All right, so we are gonna draw our own uh, cubist roosters. So. At the bottom of this page, I've given you some examples of some real drawings of roosters. I'm sorry, some real pictures of roosters. Some drawings of roosters that look like real life. 
and then you also have uh, Picasso's version. So depending upon what you want to do, you might want to base yours on a, a picture, a real life drawing, or or Picasso's, or you might want to combine it into into something completely different that is, you know, 100% your own. So I'm gonna kind of base mine on a picture of a real rooster. And remember, the goal is to not have it look 100% real when I'm done. You should still be able to tell what it is, but it's not gonna look like, like real life because we're worried about the, the cubist things. We're worried about big main shapes, um, colors that don't matter, uh, stuff might not end up being in the right place. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of sketch out my main, my main shapes real quick. All right, so there is kind of my basic rooster shapes. Now, when I'm thinking about the color, like we said, it doesn't entirely matter um, whether it looks real or not. I'm gonna try to use some of the, the techniques that Picasso would have used, except I'm using crayons instead of paint. Um, but it's actually kind of a good thing because if we were using paint, it would want to blend together and his colors were, were kind of kept separate. All right, let me think about what I want this dude to look like. All right, so there is my Picasso rooster. Um, so I looked at a picture of a, a rooster. I tried real quick to just get the main shapes down. Um, as I was coloring, I sort of broke it up into different sections, and then I focused on those sections and tried to do them in, in, in different ways. Um, so the overall shape, we can tell it's a, it's a chicken, hopefully. Hopefully you can tell it's a rooster, if not, then I did not do a good job, but it's not important that it looks lifelike. All right, so remember, you can base yours off of this idea. You can look at any of the pictures, uh, the reference pictures, be it the, the real picture, the drawings, or Picasso's. Uh, do your best, take your time, have fun, and I can't wait to see these. Uh, these always turn out pretty awesome. A uh, whole lot of funky looking, colorful chickens. I'm excited about that. All right, my friends. See you later. Bye.